So now, the next section, mindful matter. That means mind to matter relationship. Here, mind is the conditioning state and matter is the conditioned state. And there is only one condition in this relationship and that is post nascence. So by way of post nascence, mind is a condition for matter. Now post nascence condition is a condition where a conditioning state assists conditioned states that has arisen prior to itself by supporting and strengthening them. So here, the conditioned state arose earlier. And then later, when that conditioned state is still existing, the conditioning state arises. And when it arises, it supports and strengthens the already existing conditioned state. So the conditioning states in this relation are subsequently arisen status and chaitis seekers. The conditioned states are the material phenomena of the body born of all four causes. Now there are four causes for matter and so this body is said to be caused by these four causes karma, consciousness, nutriment and climate. So these four causes. This condition begins with the first bhavanga in relation to the material phenomena born of karma at the moment of rebirth linking. So at the moment of conception there arises a rebirth consciousness and after the rebirth consciousness there arise many moments of bhavanga. So at the moment of rebirth consciousness, the rebirth consciousness and the material properties born of karma arise together. So in that case there can be no post nascent condition. But when we come to the first bhavanga that follows the rebirth chitta, then we can have this post nascent condition. Because, let's say, heart base. Heart base arises with the rebirth consciousness. And it arises and then it will last for 17 thought moments. Now, after the first rebirth consciousness, there follow the moments of bhavanga. So when it comes to the first bhavanga, and first bhavanga arises, uh, that first bhavanga is a condition for the heart base by way of post nascence. It arises later, and then when it arises, it supports and it strengthens the still existing heart base at that moment. So, here it is the other way. The conditioning state arises after the conditioned state. But when conditioning state arises, conditioned state must be existing. Just as the rainwater that falls later promotes the growth and development of the already existing vegetation. So trees and plants have been existing for maybe a long time and then the rain comes like today. <laughs> today is too much rain. <laughs> so the rain comes and it promotes the growth and development of the already existing trees and plants. So the rain is a post nascent conditioning state and trees and plants are the post nascent conditioned states. So we have too much of post nascent condition today. <laughs> so 
Just as the rainwater that falls later promotes the growth and development of the already existing vegetation, so the subsequently arisen mental states support the pre-arisen mental material phenomena so that they continue to produce similar material phenomena in succession. So this is post-nascent condition. And then next is pre-nascent condition. I will not go into many details. <laughs> it's difficult to follow. So pre-nascent means conditioning state arises and is existing when the conditioned state arises. So it's a condition where a conditioning state, a material state which has already arisen and reached the stage of presence or TD causes mental states or the conditioned states to arise after it. It is like the sun which arises first in the world and gives light to people who appear after it has arisen. So the sun was there before and then people appear and so the sun is a pre nascent condition and the people are the pre nascent conditioning state and the people are the conditioned states of pre nascent condition. Now there are two main types of pre-nascence conditions and the one is base pre-nascence in Pali Vattu Purijata and two object pre-nascence Aramana Purijata. Vattu means the base of or seat of consciousness so eye base, ear base, nose base and so on and object pre-nascence means objects so there are six kinds of objects taught in the third chapter. So when a seeing consciousness arises, it arises depending on the eye base and it takes the visible object as object. And the visible object arose before the seeing consciousness arises. And Ibis also arose before the seeing consciousness arises. So when seeing consciousness arises, the object as well as the base are still existing. So when they are still existing, seeing consciousness arises. And that seeing consciousness is said to be conditioned by the eye base and also by the visible object. So the eye base here is called base pre nascence condition and the visible object is called object pre nascence condition. So in this condition both base pre nascence and object pre nascence the Conditioning states arise before the conditioned states. So conditioned states arises after the arising of conditioning states and those conditioning states serve as a base and object for that uh, conditioned state. Uh, in this example, the seeing consciousness. So when we see something, we can think of these two conditions. What we see is what condition? Object pre nascent condition. And the, our eyes, base pre nascent condition. The same with when we hear something, when we smell something and so on. So patana can be put into uh, daily activities. And the next is concepts and mind and matter for mind. So it is a relationship between concept, mind and matter on the one hand and mind on the other. So 
the conditioning state consists of concept, mind, and matter. And conditioned states consists of only mind. And there are two varieties here. The one is object and the other is called decisive support. Now, object condition is easy to understand. A condition where a conditioning state as object causes other states, the condition states to arise, taking it as their object. So when you see something, then there is the object condition operating. What you see is the object, and then you have the I, and there is the seeing consciousness. Seeing consciousness takes the visible object as object, and so the object, or the visible object, is the conditioning state for seeing consciousness, which is the conditioned state. And there is nothing that is not an object condition. So everything is an object condition. 89 chaitas or 121 chaitas, 52 chaitasikas, 28 material properties and nibbana and also panyatis or concepts. So all are the object of consciousness. So there is nothing that is not an object condition. And that the next one is decisive support or in Pali Upanisaya. So this decisive support is a condition where the conditioning state is an exceptionally desirable or important object which causes the conditioned state. Now, the decisive support has three varieties. The first one is called object decisive support. So it must be object and it must be a strong object. It can exert strong influence on the mind. For example, a very desirable object, a very beautiful object. And second variety is called proximity decisive support. It is more or less the same as the proximity support. So it can be obtained between uh, different moments of consciousness and mental factors. And the third one is called natural decisive support. This is the widest of the 24 modes of relationships. So it is a wide relation that includes as the conditioning states all past mental or material phenomena that become strongly efficacious for the arising at a subsequent time of the conditioned states which are subsequent chittas and chittasikas. Now here, in this condition, the conditioning states are mental and physical phenomena. So both mind and matter. But the conditioned states are only mind or chittas and chittasikas. Now for example, Prior lust may be a natural decisive support condition for the volitions of killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, etc. And prior lust can be a natural decisive support condition for the wholesome acts. So it can be the decisive support for both unwholesome and wholesome acts. Now, suppose a person has lust. Through lust, he may commit killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, and so on. And so his killing, stealing, and sexual misconduct are conditioned by the prior lust, by way of natural decisive support. That means his lust that arose prior to the subsequent killing and so on is a conditioning state and killing and so on are conditioned state. 
Sometimes, because of lust or greed, you do meritorious deed. Now you are attached to, or you want to be reborn in a blissful state. You want to be reborn in a celestial realm. So in order to be reborn in a celestial realm, you practice dana and sila. So you practice dana or sila because you are influenced by the desire, by the uh, greed for the blissful existence. In that case, unwholesome state is a decisive support for wholesome state. So unwholesome state can be decisive support for wholesome state and wholesome state can be decisive support for unwholesome state. That is why this condition is said to be very wide. Prior faith, the volition of prior faith for the volition of giving alms, undertaking precepts and practicing meditation. Now, even uh, prompted by desire to attain enlightenment, you practice meditation. So the practice of meditation is influenced by your desire or your attachment to enlightenment. So in that case, uh, your desire or greed or attachment is the conditioning state and the practice of meditation and through meditation gaining jhana and enlightenment are the conditioned states. And faith or the other wholesome states can be a decisive support condition for later wholesome states as well as unwholesome states. Here also motivated by faith say in the uh, three gems and so on, you practice giving alms or keep precepts or practice meditation. And so the giving alms, keeping precepts and practicing meditation are the conditioned states and the faith is a conditioning state. Sometimes you may have unwholesome acts which is dependent on faith. Once you have faith and then out of faith you may do something wrong. Or you may commit killing and so on. So in that case, faith is the condition for the later and wholesome uh, mental states. And also this includes also the individual and food, climate, dwelling place and so on. So suppose you get good food and you eat good food and after eating that good food you you may want to do something which is unwholesome or which is wholesome or you enjoy a good meal and then you want to get a good meal like this in the future and then you may do something unwholesome to get uh, that kind of meal and so these can be the condition for the wholesome and unwholesome states that arise later. So this natural decisive support condition is very wide. Although it is very wide, the conditioned states of this condition are only cheetahs and cheetahsikas. Now, this natural decisive support is said to be of uh, Abhidhamma method and Suttanta method. So according to Abhidhamma method, only the Chaitas and Chaitisikas are the conditioned states of this, this condition. But according to Suttanta method, anything can be the natural decisive support of anything. So 
we say as a joke that if you cannot think of any other condition, just say natural decisive support and you will not be wrong. <laughs> okay, next one is mind and matter for mind and matter. So here, conditioning state consists of mind and matter and conditioned states also consists of mind and matter and there are nine of them. And the first one is predominance condition. And that predominance condition is of two kinds at the bottom of page 316. One is object predominance. It's a condition where the conditioning state as object dominates over the mental states which take it as their object. Now, for us, the object of a Buddha statue, the object of a Buddha statue is a object predominance condition for us. Whenever we see a Buddha statue, we become devoted and we pay respect to the Buddha and so on. So only those objects which are esteemed, cherished or strongly desired can become the conditioning states in this relation. Those that are very beautiful or those that are very ugly, so such objects belong to this relation. This condition is virtually identical with the object decisive support condition differing from it only slightly in the conditioning forces. And the next one is cognizance predominance. That means they arise together and they predominate. So it's a condition where a conditioning state dominates conditioned states cognizant with itself. You learn that there are four deepities or four predominance in the seventh chapter. And they are will to do, energy, consciousness, and investigation. Among them, only one can take on the role of predominant condition at a given occasion. So there can be no four kings in a country, there can be only one king. So in the same way, there can be only one predominant factor at a given time. So when one is predominant factor, then the others are not. And then only in Javana Chaitas with two roots and three roots. So it is said that the predominance can be obtained only with the two root consciousness and three root consciousness. The coordination mental and material phenomena are the conditioned states. So those that arise together with these four the chaitas, chaitasigas, and also material property born of chaita are the conditioned states in this relation. So predominance is of two kinds, object predominance and cognizance predominance. One is the object and the other is like a friend. They arise together and they act predominant over others. And the next is cognizance condition. So in this condition, the conditioning state and conditioned state arise at the same time and exist at the same time. It's a condition where a conditioning state on arising causes the conditioned states to arise simultaneously with itself. So it arises and at the same time it causes the conditioned states to arise. So not that it arises first and then later it causes the conditioned states to arise. As soon as it arises, it causes the conditioned state to arise also at the same time. So the, it is compared to the flame of a lamp which on arising causes the light, color and heat to arise along with it. As soon as a flame arises, then light, color, and heat also arise at the same time. And light, color, and heat are caused by the flame. So flame is the cognizance condition, and light and others are conditioning state of cognizant condition, and the others are conditioned states. This condition may be divided into three types. 
that is in, in this manual, as is done in the above text, or it may be more finely divided into five types. One, each mental state, jeta or jeta sika, for the associated mental states. That means mental state to mental state. To each mental state for the cognizant material phenomena. That means with consciousness there arise material properties. And so when they arise together, one is the condition for the other. Number three, each of the four great essentials for the other three great essentials. And here, great essentials mean the four essential elements, the element of earth, water, fire, and air. So these four, when one is the conditioning state, then the other three are conditioned states and so on. And for each of the four great essentials for derived material phenomena. That means the dependent material phenomena. So each of the four essentials for derived material phenomena or dependent material phenomena and that means when material properties arise, they, uh, there arise the four great essentials and also those that are dependent on these four. So, so they arise together. So when they arise together, one of the four great essentials is the cognizance conditioning state of cognizance condition and the other dependent material properties are the conditioned states of cognizance condition. And the fifth one is at the moment of rebirth linking the heart base for the resultant mental states and the latter in turn for the heart base. It is said that at the moment of rebirth linking, there arise the uh, resultant consciousness and then jt seekers concomitant with it and the material properties caused by karma. So among them there is heart base. So it is said that at the moment of rebirth linking, heart base and heart base on the one hand and cheta and chetisega on the other can be conditioned for each other. So that means at that moment rebirth consciousness and chetisegas are conditioning state and heart base is conditioned state. And then heart base is the conditioning state and rebirth consciousness and mental factors are conditioned states. So in this way there are five kinds of cognizance condition. And next is mutuality condition. If you understand the cognizance, you understand mutuality condition. In cognizance condition, only one is the conditioning and the other is the conditioned state. But in the mutuality condition, both are conditioning and conditioned. When one is conditioning, the other is conditioned. And when the other is conditioning, then the one is conditioned like at the moment of rebirth linking. So at the moment of rebirth linking, chetas and chetasigas are conditioning and heart base is conditioned. And again, heart base is conditioning and chetas and chetasigas are conditioned. The same with chetas and chetasigas arising together. So when chetas and chetasigas arise together, Cheta is a conditioning state and Jetisika is a conditioned state and then in turn Jetisika is a conditioning state and Cheta is conditioned state. So they, they go back and forth. So that is why they are called mutuality condition. So mutuality condition is actually a subordinate type of cognizance condition. It is actually included in the a cognizance condition. In the general cognizance condition, the conditioning state simply causes the conditioned state to arise together with itself, but no reciprocity in the conditioning 
force is required. However, in the mutuality condition, each of the conditioning states is at the same time and in the same way a conditioned state in relation to the very states that it conditions. So they are to one another. Thus, a conditioning state in the relation of mutuality gives its force to the conditioned state and also receives the force of the conditioned state, which is a conditioning state relative to itself. This is compared to a tripod, each leg of which assists the other two legs reciprocally in enabling the tripod to stand upright. But I think the tripods in this room are not the example for mutuality condition because they are not just three sticks put together. They are joined at, at the top with some other thing. <laughs> so here tripod means just the three sticks put together and they depend on each other. And then support condition, you, you know the support condition. So the support condition is where the conditioning state causes the conditioning state to arise by serving as the support or foundation on which they depend. So here conditioning state is like a support, like a base, uh, like a location, and conditioned states are those that stays on it. And conditioning state is said to be related to the conditioned state in a manner similar to the way the earth supports trees and vegetation. So this condition is compared to the earth, uh, which supports the trees and vegetation. That is, they grow on the earth and so are this, uh, the base on which they grow. Or a canvas supports a painting. You paint something on the canvas. So the canvas is the supporter of the painting. And there are two main categories of this support condition and they are coordination support. When you hear the word coordination, you understand that they arise together, they exist together. And the pre nascent support, that is, one exists before or one arises before the other. So coordination support condition is identical in all respects with the coordination condition. pre nascent support condition includes two subsidiary types. One is simple base pre nascent support, which is identical with base pre nascent discussed under the pre nascent condition, page 314. So in order to be this condition, it must be a base and it must have arisen before, and it must be a support. So if, if anything answers these three conditions, then it is called a base pre nascent support, or what to pure jata nisaya. The other condition is called base object pre nascent support. So in this case, it must be a base. It must be an object. It must be pre-existing. Or, I mean, it must be pre-arising. And also it must be a support. Now, this refers to the special case when a cheetah arises support by the heart base and at the same time makes that heart base its object. Now, Chitta can take the heart base as object. It is a very rare case. Chitta depends on the heart base to arise. Now, at the same time, it takes the heart as object. So, when a person during meditation takes the heart as object, and practice meditation on it, then the heart base becomes this condition, the base object pre nascence condition. Because it is a base of consciousness, it is called a base, and because it is taken as object, it is object, and because it arose before the consciousness and is existing at the moment the consciousness arises, so it is pre nascence, and also it is a base for this 
consciousness, so it is a support. Thus, on such an occasion, the heart base is simultaneously a support and an object for a single chaita. And the next is nutriment condition. The nutriment condition is twofold, that is, material and immaterial. So, edible food is a condition for this body. Edible food really means nutriment in the food eaten. So, that is the condition for this body produced by four causes. And the immaterial nutriment is a condition for the cognition, mind and matter. Now, there are four kinds of uh, nutriments we met in the seventh chapter. So the first is nutriment in the food that is eaten and what are the other three? Contact, volition and consciousness. So these three are immaterial, that means they are mental. So there are two kinds of nutriment condition. And Nutriment condition is a condition where a conditioning state relates to the conditioned states by maintaining them in existence and supporting their growth and development. Sometimes it not only maintains but it also produces. So this is compared to a prop which supports an old house and prevents it from collapsing. You don't see such props in this country or in the developed countries. But in the underdeveloped countries, you may see such things almost everywhere. The house leaning to one side and then there are props uh, put there to keep it from uh, collapsing. So that's the essential function of nutriment is supporting or reinforcing. So material nutriment is a nutritive essence found in the food eaten which is a conditioning state for this physical body. When food is ingested, its nutritive essence produces new matter born of nutriment. Now here it produces. And it also reinforces the material groups born of all four causes. So the nutriment both produces and reinforces or maintains the body. So material groups born of all four causes keeping them strong and fresh so that they can continue to arise in succession. The internal nutriment contained in the material groups born of all four causes also serve as a condition by reinforcing the internal material phenomena coexisting with it in its own group and the material phenomena in the other groups situated in the body. Now, material properties are made into groups this group, that group. And so the material phenomena coexisting with it in its own group and the material phenomena in the other group situated in the body. So they support the material phenomena in one group, supports the material phenomena in, in another group like that. And mental nutriment is threefold. Contact, volition, and consciousness. So they are conditions for the cognizant mental and material phenomena. That means those that arise together. Since there is contact, you can take any type of consciousness as example of this condition. So the contact arising together with that chitta is the nutriment condition and the others are those that are conditioned. And mental volition also arises with every type of consciousness and you can pick up any type of consciousness as an example and a consciousness itself. So these are the conditions for the cognition, mental and material phenomena. And then faculty condition. Now faculty condition there are three kinds of faculty condition. One is pre-nascent faculty. 
Now, when you hear the pre-nascence, you know that conditioning states arise before the conditioned states and are still existing when the conditioned state arises. And two is material life faculty. And three, cognizance faculty. That is mental life faculty. So in pre-nascent faculty, each of the five sensitivities arisen at the static phase of the past Bhavanga Cheda is a faculty condition for its respective type of sense consciousness along with its Cheda Sikas. In the body there are said to be five sensitivities or five sensitive parts. That is, uh, there are sensitive material properties in the eye, in the ear, in the nose, in the tongue and in the body. So what we call sensitivity is those sensitive parts and not every part of the body. Suppose there is the eyeball. Not the whole eyeball is called eye sensitivity. Only the material properties that can receive light or that can receive image are called eye sensitivity and so on. So each of the five sensitivities is a faculty condition for its respective type of sense consciousness along with its chetisikas. That means, let us take eye sensitivity. There is eye sensitivity and there is sense consciousness. That means seeing consciousness. So when seeing consciousness arises, it arises dependent upon the eye sensitivity. And here, eye sensitivity controls the efficiency of the consciousness or controls the seeing function of the consciousness. For example, good eyes produce acute vision while weak eyes result in poor vision. So when the eye sensitivities are not good, then your eyesight is also not good. When the eye sensitivities are good, your eyesight is good. So those who wear glasses, have bad eye sensitivities. <laughs> so it is important that we get good eye sensitivities and in order to get good eye sensitivities we need to do something here in this life so that we are endowed with good sensitivity in the future lives. So that is why people offer lights and others to promote that good eye sensitivity. Or you may offer glasses to the people who need the glasses. And material life faculty in the material groups born of karma is a faculty condition for the other nine material phenomena in the same groups. For it controls them by maintaining their vitality. Now, when at the moment of relinking or rebirth, I said this many times, right? At the moment of rebirth, the material properties arise. And the material properties arise in groups. And for human beings, there are said to be three groups of material properties arising. And each group has ten material properties. So we say three groups, ten material properties. Among the, each of the group, there is what is called a life faculty, material life faculty. So there is one material property that controls them by maintaining their vitality, that keeps them alive. So if there were no life faculty in our bodies, our bodies will become rotten in a few moments. So our bodies are fresh and living because there is this life faculty in our bodies and this life faculty is controlling the other material properties by maintaining their vitality, by keeping them alive. And then number three is the 15 material faculties are each a cognizant faculty condition for the associated mental states and the cognizant material phenomena. Now 15 immaterial faculties then you have to go back to the 22 faculties in the 7th chapter to find the 15 immaterial faculties. 
they are joy, ill will, and others uh, as a feeling, and also faith, energy, m- mindfulness, concentration, wisdom, and so on. So these faculties, they are each a coordinate faculty condition for the associated mental states and the coordination material phenomena. So when a consciousness arises, there arise also the mental factors, and among those mental factors, there is feeling. So when there is feeling, we take feeling as a conditioning state, and the remaining uh, consciousness and other mental factors as conditioned states. In a wholesome consciousness, there is faith, there is mindfulness, and there is understanding. So we can take faith as the conditioning factor or conditioning state and the consciousness and the other mental factors as conditioned states and so on. Now, regarding the conditions, we have to understand that Of the faculties, the two sex faculties of femininity and masculinity do not become conditioning states in the faculty condition. Although they are included in the faculties, so among the 22 faculties, there are femininity and masculinity. But when we come to Patana, we avoid these two from including in the faculties. So these two faculties of femininity and masculinity do not become conditioning states in the faculty condition. So they do not serve as faculty condition. They are excluded because they do not have the functions of a condition. A condition has three functions, producing, supporting and maintaining. But the sex faculties do not execute any of these functions. They do not produce, they do not support, and they do not maintain anything, and so they are not called faculty condition here. Nevertheless, they are still classed as faculties because they control the sexual structure, appearance, character, and disposition of the body. Although they are not Uh, counted as faculty condition, still they are called faculties because they control the sexual structure, appearance, character, and disposition. That means uh, these are not the real, ultimate realities, the sexual structure, appearance, character, and disposition. They are some modes of the ultimate realities, and since they are not ultimate realities, uh, they are not said to be produced by these two things, uh, femininity and masculinity. So that the whole personality tends towards either femininity or masculinity. Now, through femininity, uh, one may look delicate, one may look beautiful, and one may uh, play with cooking things or something like that, and the other may uh, play with swords and so on. So this is influenced by the femininity or masculinity. Although these are influenced by the femininity or masculinity, they are not produced by them and they are just the, the way of and the behavior and so on, so that uh, they are not ultimate realities. So femininity and masculinity are not included in the faculty condition in the patana, but they are included in just faculties, in other Abhidhamma texts, and so they can be called faculties, but not faculty condition as to the Patana teaching. Now, dissociation condition. Okay, I must 
finish this dissociation condition. Too. So dissociation condition is threefold. At the moment of rebirth linking, the heart base is a condition for result and mental states and consciousness and mental factors for cognition matter by way of cognitions. The post nascent consciousness and mental factors for this pre nascent material body by way of post nascent And the six bases in the course of life, that means during life, for the seven consciousness elements by way of pre nascent So the dissociation is said to be of three kinds. At the moment of rebirth, the heart base and mental aggregates arise simultaneously. And each is a dissolution condition for the other by reason of the particular characteristics that distinguish them as material and mental phenomena. Although they arise together, they are not said to be associated because they do not fulfill the four conditions as uh, rising together, seizing together, having uh, the same or common object and having the same base. So they arise together but they are called dissociated. At the moment of rebirth again the mental aggregates are a condition for the other kinds of karma bond matter. So at the moment of rebirth there arise a karma bond matter and the mental aggregates are a condition for the karma bond matter by way of dissociation condition. And during the course of existence for mind bond matter, and also during life, the mental aggregates arise, and at the same time, the matter bond of chitta arises too. So in that case, the Mental aggregates are a condition for the mind bond matter by way of dissociation condition. Dissociation also comprises pre nascent and post nascent types. The former obtains between matter as a conditioning state and mind as a conditioned state. So when matter is conditioning and mind is conditioned, there is pre nascent condition because matter arises first and then the mind or mental states arise later. The latter obtains between mind as conditioning state and matter as the conditioned state. When mind is said to be conditioning and matter is conditioned, then mind arises later and matter arises first. So there is post nascent conditioning. Um, these are identical with pre nascent support condition and post nascent condition respectively. So they are mentioned earlier on page 318 and 313. So between mind and matter there is this dissociation condition. They arise together but they are not associated. And the example is given of six kinds of tastes not mixing together with one another and also of oil and water that do not mix. Although you put oil and water, they do not mix. So in the same way, although they are together, and they do not mix and so Mental states and material states, although they arise together, they are not said to be associated. Okay. <laughs> Sharing marriage with the departed. The estimated 85,646 people who died while building the death railway linking Tambuzaya to Kanchanaburi between June 1942 and 16 October 1943. Father of Construction and Hellfire Mass Memorial were erected to commemorate them. The agony they undergone before collapsing to death. 
something which they never bargained for, but their lives were abruptly stopped. To appease to their grievous mental consciousness, to harmonize their spirits, a ceremony to radiate Mitta and merit sharing with the departed is necessary. Is this a right view and right action? Please discuss and comment. To help them in their now respective existences, what we do is sharing merits. So sharing merit is more effective and better than just radiating Mitta. We can radiate Mitta to them, but sharing merits with them is more beneficial uh, to them because they can get uh, results and they can escape the miserable state they are in. And as I said yesterday, if those people, now they died in 1942 and 1943, so it's about how many years? 60 years ago, and they may be reborn in different existences, and so we cannot hope to benefit uh, all of them who died at that time. But still, uh, we can share merits with them so that there may be uh, someone who can still uh, know this sharing of merit with them and who can uh, get the share of merit and get the benefits of the good karma they acquire through uh, rejoicing at the merit done here. So it is a good practice to share merits with the departed ones and we should share merits with them as often as we can because they may miss to t take the share if we share for just once. So if we do it and many times or every day then uh, there will be some opportunity for them to get rejoice in our merit and get the benefits of the merit. In, in the stage, when s some people ask me to, to radiate Mida to those who have departed, so I always say that please share merits with them that is better and that is more beneficial to them and just radiating metta to them. So you may do a ceremony to share merits with them. That's a very good uh, act. I think I'll put off these for tomorrow. <laughs>